Ridge. I'm vice chair of the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, and I'll be chairing this evening in the absence of Mike Mitchell. I'm calling the meeting to order at 7.01. And I'd like to begin by asking that each of the advisory committee members uh, state their names, starting from my far right. I'm Bob Burns. Brian Watt. Brian Burke. Marty Birch. Scott Orcher, staff. Thank you. I'm hoping that you each had a chance to go through the minutes that were sent with the call to the meeting and the agenda. Um, and I'm wondering if there are any corrections or additions to those minutes. No corrections or additions? Uh, do I hear a motion to accept, uh, to approve the minutes? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those who are opposed, nay. The um, minutes are approved. Uh, citizen comments on issues and items not on the agenda. I believe that our guests are here to add to an agenda item that we'll be seeing later. Is that correct? Oh, I am. Did I'm you? Here for it. I haven't had a chance to look at your agenda. I went oh. to the community room. Uh, because the last time I checked, that's where you met. Oh. What I found out you know. <laughs> Moving on up. <laughs> uh, what's on your agenda? Um, I guess I want citizen comments or something. There. Yeah. That's what's up now. Right. <laughs> you didn't miss me. No problem. Could, could you begin by stating your name, please? And I'll then do just that. thank you. <laughs> My name is Tom O'Brien, and I am the co-chair of the Hazel Grove Westling Farms Neighborhood Association. And good friend Larry Hanlon here is chair of the Caulfield Neighborhood Association, mm -hmm. and we serve together on the Citizens Citizen Involvement Council. Yeah. <laughs> I have to remember the top proper terms at your. At the City Commission meeting of June 6th, Mike Mitchell gave a presentation, uh, his annual update on what PRAC is doing, their accomplishments over the past year, and some of your plans for this coming year. And in that, state, in that statement or that presentation, he talked about, uh, I believe it was his item three, uh, having to do with the concept plans for both the uh, Glen Oak Road and Filbert Run Parks for this year. And I wanted to follow up a little bit with you regarding that issue. Uh, during Mike's comments, uh, he said that I believe at staff's request, the two would be done simultaneously as far as the concept plans, and I think that's a great idea. Anytime we can save the city money and you know, put it all together and utilize the resources more effectively, we're for it. Uh, at the same time, I wanted to uh, give Scott Archer and uh, Larry Potter uh, pats on the back for some of the cooperation that they have been giving to our Hazel Grove Wessling Farms neighborhood uh, as it relates to Filbert Run Park. The lands that were set aside uh, during negotiations for building the Filbert Run subdivision, uh, one of the things that was used to sway the Planning Commission to approve that development was that a number of citizens who do not live in the city put together a petition and brought it before the Planning Commission requesting that if a park were included, they would very strongly support that development. We would like to see our park at Filbert Run have the same level of priority as perhaps Glen Oak Road. And I, you know, I, I don't bite into Larry. They've got 1,600 residents there with no park. We only have 800 and some residents with no park. We're both in pretty much the same situation in that both of our areas of the city 
are primarily newer residences that have paid system development charges to provide ourselves for parks and those monies have needed to be utilized elsewhere throughout the park system in the city. I just wanted to give you a little bit of update. Uh, we met myself and a couple of other representatives from our neighborhood association met with Mayor Neely, Commissioner Roth, Scott, and City Manager David Frazier back on the 27th of July. And we had had a couple of meetings prior to that and conversations, but we didn't seem to be getting out of a stall mode. And uh, after that meeting in July, we reached a point where we finally gained some agreement. The citizens in the neighborhood are willing to put forth time and effort to bring that park into a safer mode. Uh, the day that we met, we pointed out five safety issues that we were concerned about in that area. And to be quite honest with you, if any of us, yourselves or ourselves, had our properties in the condition that that piece of land was in, we would be facing a $1,000 a day fine from the city because of overgrown brush and weeds and so forth. So we asked the city, we asked Scott and uh, City Manager Frazier, if we were to provide the labor, could the City Parks Department provide us with drop boxes and allow us to get in there and clean up some of the area? Uh, they agreed to that and we have since held a number of smaller work parties but two large work parties. We went out and went around in the part of our neighborhood that is closest to the park during uh, the time frame, well, first of all, we announced it at our next neighborhood association meeting, and we got a lot of people who were interested in volunteering and helping. Uh, we took advantage of that, and we went out, and over a period of about five days, there were nine people who circulated uh, around the neighborhood, handing out invitations to a work party. Uh, we <coughs> covered a total of 280 residences, uh, we explained the situation to those residents and asked for their cooperation in remedying things such as, you know, it was a, it was a habitat for a coyote. A coyote was in there and killing off small animals. Children were getting lost in there. Uh, there were some safety issues with regard to a significant drop off along the sidewalk where the original developer, when he put in the sidewalk, he didn't backfill it. And so you had a drop of anywhere from six to eight inches and it was undercutting the sidewalks, which were eventually going to cause the sidewalks to fail. So with the help of the neighbors uh, and the help of Larry Potter, Larry delivered six yards of fill dirt. We took and we placed that appropriately to bring the levels up and protect the sidewalk from failing. Uh, we went in and we cleaned out a lot of the brush. We have thus far through the two weekend parties that we've had, uh, had a, a very good turnout. There were 24 people showed up for the first one from around the neighborhood. And the second one, there were 15 people. Some of those had been there before, some were new. And we filled two dumpsters or drop boxes the first Saturday. The second Saturday we worked, we filled another two dumpsters. We had uh, individual individuals who were working over there who couldn't make it to the weekend events and they filled a th fifth one. So we've so far been able to haul five dumpsters or large drop boxes full of debris out of there. Uh, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but I wanted to share with you that information so that you know that our citizens in the Hazel Grove Westling Farms neighborhood are as concerned about having a park where their children can be safe and play as anyone else. We're looking forward to participating in the concept planning process with you and we would invite you to come down and see some of the progress that we've made in cleaning up what was a, at best, a, a, a really junky site. Uh, Scott, I think, can attest to that, <laughs> that it was, it was not something you'd <clears throat> want next door to you. Would that be correct assessment? Uh, it's your time, Tom. I'm not going to get into <laughs> okay. debating that right now. Okay. I do have a question, and I wanted to address another matter with you, but 
because it's going to be important as you move forward with the park concept plan. The property is actually two specific tax lots, and there is a problem with how they are currently listed, and that needs to be rectified before we make much progress on the concept plan. And Tom, so I'm, Tom down, I'm Brian. If you could just repeat what you said when you sit back down, we can get that. We can get that for the record too. What you just said about the, the issue. I'll try to walk you through this. There's a there's a problem that probably is going to well, not probably will need uh, to be addressed. Uh, hopefully before we move into the concept planning process because it could throw a monkey wrench in the concept plan process or the park plan process. If you look at this particular map, it is showing a natural resource overlay district as it currently appears on city, county, and metro maps. When in fact there's two lots there, the rectangular shaped lot is lot 8,000 and the L-shaped lot is lot 8100. The distances on those lots, not that it's significant, but the placement of that is in the wrong place. If you flip over to the opposite side of the page, <clears throat> rather than having that wet area run through the center of that rectangular shaped lot, if you look about one, one fourth of the way into the L-shaped lot, you'll see a dry drainage ditch. Mm -hmm. That is the only place on either of those two lots that encounters any moisture. Uh, it encounters moisture usually about three days a year in part of the bottom of the drainage ditch. Beyond that, uh, there's not much there. But since we are restricted in what can be done in terms of park development due to the fact that it's in a natural resource overlay district, i.e. a stream bed, we need to get that corrected so that the stream is indicated where it actually exists for what drainage ditch, you know, if it is a stream. I think what happened was maybe somebody looked at an aerial photo, saw some trees, and jump to the conclusion that there was moisture there. There is, it's dry as a bone. <laughs> we took the, the mayor and the, and the city commissioner Roth and uh, Scott and the city manager through there and I said, I challenge you to show me the water. And they agreed that it wasn't there at all. So we need to probably get that corrected uh, in order to move forward in an in a appropriate manner. So I would ask that that be one of the things that you place on your agenda of things to do. Uh, I would invite you to come down and look at the site. There is a pipe which runs underneath Hazel Grove Avenue from the opposite side, which carries runoff water. Now there is a development in process. I don't know that it's come to Planning Commission yet, but it's proposed at this time. Uh, I understand they're going to build eight homes on that piece of property that just churned over on the opposite side of Hazel Grove Avenue. That was a parcel that probably would have been available to the city for additional park space, but nobody was aware that it was on the market twice. Uh, so it would have been a nice adjacent piece of property right across the, the roadway. Uh, do you have any questions regarding what you're seeing there? <clears throat> <clears throat> Just the dashed line, I assume that's the sewer line, or the, uh, the not the sewer, but the, the drainage line the underground. Drain is that, it's kind of a shadowy looking thing. Uh, it's... Oh, no, I, I've got that on the on the actual... Okay, right. Whatever that is, the Google map, but on the opposite side, it shows the lot numbers and the addresses, uh, yes. I think, there. There's a dashed blue line. I'm just assuming that's the under, under street, under... You know, the water. No, 
No, it's, what is it's, that? it's not. It's over from the blue line is what they have currently designated on the maps. Mm -hmm. You're talking about this mm -hmm. map here? Yes. That's what they're designating as the stream. Mm -hmm. When in fact the stream is actually over on this L shaped lot about almost 25% of the way yep. into that. I've drawn that in there and I'm just wondering, I don't know if you know, but what is that dashed line then that comes out of the misplaced blue line currently? Well, that's, that's an underground, there. yes, that's yeah. an underground okay. buried uh, line that takes it over into uh, a retention pond. Okay, over on so that does line. exist and that is approximately in the correct that's approximately in the correct area. Okay. Uh, it's simply a matter of where it enters that. Right, right. Okay. Is at the edge yep. here of the two. I've got that. Yeah, parts. I can kind of see that. Okay. You okay. can see how that runs yep. across there. And that is buried once it gets near the street. Okay. What is the purpose, excuse me. Uh, sure. What is the purpose of that, of that uh, pipe or whatever you called it? Stormwater runoff. Stormwater runoff. Stormwater runoff. Pipe. Pipe. Uh, it's a collector. Anytime that you're building hard surface areas in the city, they want to get that moisture as easily as they can to retention ponds that will silt it out, get rid of the motor oil and the. So where does it empty out to? Well, there's it's Beaver Creek, and there's a large retention pond behind the homes on I want to say it's Dahlia. There's a. There's a street that doesn't show on this map. Uh, if you were to follow geranium down where it goes off the map and you go to the south and west of there towards South End Road, it goes into a large uh, area that is really kind of, it starts out going west and then it turns south. And that's part of the Beaver Creek. So it yeah. drains to the south. It does not drain into the property that you're talking about. Is that correct? It drains. Correct. It drains into the park, and then the theory is that it goes, it goes through the park and into that that drainage, the dash line. Yeah, okay. that's the idea. I can probably describe that retention pond better than I can. It's it's you got a, a pretty. You, it's a fairly significant. Uh, grade. Grade into the into the soils yeah. and it's it's long. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. It, it goes all the way through the park and into that into the other side. It, mm -hmm. So the pipe from hazelnut on the what would be the top of your map comes into our property and then it opens and then there's basically kind of a naturally worn ditch through the property or a, a swale yeah. through the property. I can remember that. And it goes all the way through to the other side. Because we were just there in July. Was it July or August? Uh, August, July. August, yeah. When was it? Yeah. yeah, we do a parks tour, Tom, every year with the group, and we we took them. That was right one of the visit. sites we visit okay. our our sites. Um, a couple things, if I could, just to sort of add on to. First of all, I wanted to say to Tom and and his neighborhood, uh, thank you. I want to thank you publicly. Um, they have done a, a tremendous amount of volunteer work and um, really stepped up and are doing a, a lot of maintenance that we're just not capable of doing because of our limitations and I think the the Parks and Rec Committee knows well what our our maintenance uh, limitations are um, uh, just a couple of quick comments on on uh, some of the points that Tom has made uh, one is regard to the um, the natural resource area um, the the designation on the map what this really is is a mapping issue Somewhere along the way, the the city with with Metro designate um, water resource areas um, in properties, which then those have different restrictions for development. And um, I believe that that Tom is correct that we need to probably rectify this. But really, what's going to drive that, I think, is our master plan mm -hmm. process that we're talking about. What we're really going to do with the property or not, what the development is going to be or not. Um, that I think that property, or I mean, I think that process will probably trigger some type of a remapping of the water resource mm -hmm. area as needed. So mm -hmm. let's just say hypothetically that we, the, the community, as because it's a it's a public community process that we do the, when we do a master planning, decides that the the this is really going to be more in just of uh, the park's going to be left in a in a natural state and very limited development. Then do we really need to 
to remap this because there's no development, so there's no restrictions on what we're going to do, et cetera. Or if we're going to do, you know, development in the park and the location of those things is going to be affected, then we would probably want to go through the process, which is through our planning department where you remap. You put in a sort of basically you petition to have that re-studied, and then you move. It gets appropriately placed on the map, so we then we can develop according to where the water resource area is. So I think our master plan process will flesh out this issue about the water resource plan. Um, and then I think just in, in kind of a general, you know, Tom's description about the, the condition of the park and that we've, we've been talking to the neighborhood there for, for a while. This issue's come up um, not just recently, but in, you know, in the past as well. But, um, you know, as a reminder to the Parks Commission and anybody else that might be listening or the Parks Committee, um, this is one of our undeveloped park sites. Um, we, don't, we don't have, as, as you know, we don't have the resources to maintain things at the level that we wish that we could. Um, so this is maintained in a way that the amount of resources we have available to deal with this site are, are limited. Uh, we're doing the best we can. Really appreciative of the help that the neighbors are giving us, um, but until we do something to change you know, either our funding or the amount of um, staffing that we have, we're, we're not going to be, we're not going to all of a sudden have more resources to direct to something. We can kind of on a limited basis by, by projects or whatever, we can go in and try to help clean up and, and that type of thing. But the park is a nat it's, it's in it's sort of being kept in a natural in its natural state, um, we do have some responsibilities, as, as uh, Tom was saying about you know the, you have to keep the growth at a certain level uh, for for weeds and and for fire hazards, and you can't let a site collect trash or, or or things like that. There are city codes that we are you know I think we are even more accountable to hold up on our properties. So those are the types of things I think that are the concerns. Um, I think the neighborhood wants to have us maintain it at a higher level right now than we're able to do. That's kind of where this partnership came in, and they stepped in and said, well, if, if you're not going to do it, then we can try to help do some of that. So we're trying to work through that. Um, one, of the, one of the issues, I think, has been that we certainly don't want anyone injured there, and we want those people who do use the facility to be able to use it in a safe manner. And uh, the city in the last few months has been very accommodating and working with us to achieve those goals. Uh, I really think that from a long-term standpoint, the remapping is probably something that would be desirable. Uh, the grasses that are along that dry creek bed are better than six foot high in some instances, and there is a play field adjacent to it, so that if a child loses a ball or kicks a ball into the grass, uh, it's not, and I think we would reduce the number of activities on on the part of wild animals in there. Uh, I just, I don't like to see people's neighborhoods, cats and small dogs being decapitated by a coyote. Uh, we, we have had some drug dealing in the area, and the uh, police department has worked very closely with us to, to help try to control that. Uh, we <clears throat> torn up a couple of fire pits where they were obviously doing some things they shouldn't have been doing. But we wanted to go in and clean out rocks and pieces of wood that have been buried in the area that would damage city mowers and equipment. They right now are mowing the L-shaped lot for the most part. It's a wide open field. Uh, we would like to see them be able to bring their moors in and at least come along near the fence line where the residents live to keep the weeds <laughs> under control a little bit there. So we're working to eliminate uh, hazards that might prevent them from being able to do that. It would take probably an extra 10 or 15 minutes of their moor time while they have the moor there to run it up through there a couple of times and pick that out. But we don't want them to go up there until we get it cleaned out. <laughs> so. Well, thank you, Tom, very much for right. coming tonight and to share this progress that you're making. Thank and you. We, we appreciate the, the work that Scott and, and uh, Larry have done and uh, the cooperation that we're getting from, from the Parks Bureau. So we hope it will continue. <coughs> Good. Thank you.
I would also like to commend you. That sounds like a great community that you live in, Tom. Well, we're, we're trying to. Use I like hard work too, so I could see myself there too. <laughs> we're trying to use it also as a opportunity to build community mm -hmm. and get people to know their neighbors and yeah. not be strangers. That sounds great, Tom. The whole community be a safer community because of it. Yep. Thank you. Well, moving on to the next item under general business. Um, we have a number of items that Scott is going to carry for us. Yeah, and what I would suggest, my recommendation here is that we move ahead to 4B2, uh, which skips over a couple of items because uh, Larry Hanlon is here for that item, I believe, and that way we can kind of get to that and he can enjoy the rest of his evening if he doesn't want to sit around <laughs> and listen to the rest of what we're talking about here. Um, interesting stuff. <laughs> not that it's not fascinating, yeah. but... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, since there's someone here specifically for that item, I'd suggest we might want to jump to that one, if you don't mind. Yep, I thought I recognized you. <laughs> if that's all right, I can just kind of give you a little uh, staff briefing on that. Um, it uh, probably sounds, this item, the, the Veterans with Disabilities Fee Waiver for the RV Park is what we're talking about. This probably sounds familiar because we spoke about that here back in, I believe it was February, and uh, Mr. Hanlon, um, actually presented that as a uh, request or a proposal for the Parks Committee to consider uh, that the city would consider adopting a policy um, that would be similar to what the state parks does, which is that um, uh, veterans with disabilities uh, receive the ability to get a waiver for camping uh, in campgrounds. And essentially, Mr. Hanlon was asking that we would consider doing the same thing at our RV park. Uh, we talked about that. Um, the uh, Parks Committee, you were, I think, s generally supportive of that idea mm -hmm. and had suggested that we could kind of move that along in the consideration process. process. <clears throat> and then following that, Mr. Hanlon uh, contacted me and said, look, there's some reasons, and if he wants to talk about it, he can, or if not, it doesn't. it's really irrelevant, but I need you to hold off on moving that item along. There's some issues that, that we're dealing with. Um, some time went by, and then he contacted me again recently and said, hey, we're, we're back on, and um, uh, whatever the issues were are, are no longer. So um, the issue is, or the uh, proposal is back in front of us. And I sent you um, the, uh, the state uh, policy, basically just pulled directly mm -hmm. off the state's website. We had looked at this before. Um, it's fairly straightforward. There's, a, there's an application. Um, if you're a veteran, a veteran with a disability can um, apply for this uh, this waiver, and it's also for um, uh, active uh, members, of active duty that that are on. I guess uh, there, there's another yeah on leave or or, or something uh, that effect. And maybe sorry. Larry, if you want, maybe uh, kind of fill in the blanks for me here, and if you wouldn't mind coming up so we can pick you up on the microphone. Um, not to interrupt. No, it's not an interruption. It's a help. <laughs> uh, what it is is if a soldier and they're home on leave, then they would be able to use the facilities. Yeah. So. Thank you. So maybe just stay there for a couple minutes while we talk through this in case there are other questions and, and so forth. Um, so I put this back in front of you. Um, my recommendation after having – we've now had a number of months to kind of let this settle and, and think about – um, my recommendation is that we would proceed with adopting basically the same policy that the state has. In fact, what I would, would like to do, we don't really have the mechani mechanism in place. We don't have the level of staffing to do a whole bunch of new process uh, type of stuff, but I think it's, I think it's a good thing. Uh, it, there's some limitations on how many days you can stay um, and so forth, and, and I think that's good. Um, I would support doing this, um, but what I would suggest that we would do is probably just just adopt almost in whole the state's policy uh, because we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, they have a form. I would even suggest that we would, would go as far as saying if, if somebody wanted to use Oregon City's RV park, our campground, that they would, um, it, for, for this purpose, that they would use the state waiver and just provide that to us that we don't have to do another process. So in other words, that state waiver would also, we would, we would and, and basically what I'm saying is we would adopt that same policy and we would accept the state 
waiver that they get once they've applied for it and received that from the state, uh, if that makes sense. So I'm I'm recommending that we that we proceed down that road and and just adopt it that way. And unless Larry, unless you've got any other ideas or thoughts, or if there's anything else that I'm missing here that we should be thinking about, but that's kind of what I think where I'm at. The only thing I have to say is, as a disabled veteran, I really appreciate it. And it, it, there's a lot to it if, if you can get these guys using that. Like, I will never go down there and spend the night. I live in Oregon City. But, you know, I'll take my motor home down and spend a day on the river and talk to some veterans. And, you know, you get together, and it, it just makes us feel like people appreciate what we've done. And for me, on both sides of the issue, you know, it's, uh, it's really important that we do this. And uh, the other issue where we kind of backed off on it is I attend veterans meetings at the VA hospital, and the issue came out about the downtown Oregon City parking. Well, all of a sudden, we've got a bad attitude where we fought a war, and why are we losing our benefits? And I said, okay, forget it. You know, it has nothing to do with that issue. So I went back in and, and we talked and I said, why don't we just let the bridge reopen, let the downtown parking take care of itself and worry about our camping spaces. And I, I got a 100% response on that. But I didn't want to make problems for our city. So I would take it very personal if you folks would accept that and approve it. I, I really like the fact that we're using something that's already out there we're not reinventing the wheel mm -hmm. um, and I also like if we kind of if we can go along with having the state take care of all the it you know checking the it's not really a background check but making sure they have all the the correct stuff to, to yeah. obtain that and that way it doesn't take as much of your mm -hmm. your guys's time so I I really like the way it's set up or how we would propose it I think simply put what we would say is, is our policy my what I'm maybe a little bit better way of refining what I was trying to say is, and, and kind of going along with what you're saying, Brian, is our policy would be that we would accept the state waiver and and have the same type of policy. So um, probably thinking that folks might already either have that or if they don't, they would just go and, and get that through the state. As, as a practical question, what would the next steps be then to... Well, uh, my, my recommendation to you would be to, um, if you're supportive of that as, as a group, uh, you would make some type of a motion to that effect, just, just basically saying that you're supportive of moving this process forward, if that's the case. Um, and then the next step would be that we, staff, would um, work on some, uh, some type of a resolution or, or something to that effect to bring to our city commission with the state uh, policy and just recommend that we would adopt that policy. Um, so the commission would have to approve the policy because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, you know, it's, it's at that level where it needed to be to do that. And that would come with your recommendation attached to it if it went forward. Well, I think as a committee we've had a chance to think about this concept because of the presentation given <coughs> last year. And um, I think we may have enough support to go ahead and, and uh, take I would be glad to entertain a motion. Can I just ask a couple questions? Oh, sure. Definitely. I wholeheartedly support the this um, application process and using what we have for the state and to recognize our veterans. I think that is very important, and thank you for your service. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I had a couple questions that I think we just probably have to modify, and that was there was some refund issues in there, and then it also talked about giving refunds at the time they checked in had they not received this documentation yet from the state. So I just want to make sure that we modify it before we actually approve it so that it can fit in with the timelines for the city as well as well, is there a cash box down there that they can provide refunds for folks if they don't? Okay. Good points. <laughs> um, well, so very good points. Those are the types of things where we're kind of speaking generally here and and, and the next step then would be that we would, um, in defining what our policy would be, we would clarify those types of things that fit. So I think what you're saying is it needs to work within our system, right. and we would make sure that it does. We wouldn't just kind of take right. the whole policy, at, you know, and that. And if it didn't work for us, so yeah, there are some things like that, and I know there's some some language about refunds and mm -hmm. and some different things. We would we would have to. 
probably tweak a few of those things to make it work for us, uh, you know, uh, just administratively. So thanks. That's a good point. Another issue that I think will dawn on you folks in a little while is we don't want a bunch of veterans moving in down there. You know, we're going to restrict <laughs> it to five days yeah. and enforce that like you would, you know, because that, you know, that dawned on me after I brought this up the first time. It says we need to make sure that everybody understands we're not going to put up with that. Right, and that's, I mean, that's the state policy too, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. And then the other thing I thought we talked about last time was <clears throat> and the state does, does not restrict seasonally either. In other words, you know, if, if you've got a pass and you want to go during a peak season, it's first come, first serve. And we talked about potentially thinking, thinking about, well, um, what are the peak seasons and should we have any type of restriction imposed on a, a veteran using a spot during a peak season and, and I, again I think that you know if we keep with what this what the state um, policy is there I don't think again I don't know it um, backwards and forwards but there is no restriction it's it's first come first serve you know uh, no matter what no matter what season yes um, the state parks have handicapped areas so if we take one or two handicapped areas that's what's available you know that's if they come in and they have a handicap sticker they can use that other than that we're, that's all the facilities we have you know it, it, they need to use the handicap spot to get the benefit so really? it would only be it's very limited very limited so that we can't we can't let the city lose revenue on this we'll lose a little but I think it'll do a lot for the community by providing a couple of spaces. Well, I think uh, as we dig into this a little bit further, I think I think you'll find that there is there is no restriction that I, at least I mean I haven't done as much, maybe perhaps research as you, well, but I, I don't think there is a restriction on. I where stand corrected. Um, with the state system, if there are handicapped spaces, the handicapped get those spaces up till seven o'clock at night. And then at seven o'clock the night, park can let anyone use them. So you're right, but I mean, correct. you could be a disabled veteran and still not have a handicap sticker. You 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 would just have that percentage disability, uh, and that would be on record, and you could have the same access without having to use a handicap spot. I don't know. I'm pretty that sure. Well, but anyway, that no, these are the I, type I of details. That. These are the type of details that you that we'll, we'll get into when we. Yeah. In our in our case. The um, and this is one of the issues. In fact, it's the item that preceded this one. We're probably going to go back to you here in a few minutes. The discussion about our, our RV park master plan and hopefully at some point upgrading uh, the the sites. We don't have designated spots right now because the whole thing is just a gravel lot basically, and uh, really either they all are or none are. I'm not really sure which, but um, there. There's no differentiation just because of the yeah. the condition of the of the RV park. So that really doesn't apply to us right now. Um, our occupancy rates uh, are, are such at this time that, to be honest, I wouldn't even be concerned about yeah, that. Don't even worry about it. Um, I think it would be something where we would get into that later as we um, maybe redevelop the the, the park, um, and also if before we develop it, if the um, if the usage of this um, pass dictates that we need to rethink how many of those spaces we can make available at a given time if we got inundated with too many of them yeah. but I really don't see that being an issue for um, uh, one example of that I have is we uh, the Clackamas County also recently implemented this same policy in their campgrounds I think last year does that sound do you, are you aware of that, I'm aware of that yeah I contacted the state when we looked at this first uh, earlier this year and uh, somehow I ended up talking to somebody in the in Clackamas County they have park ground uh, ca campgrounds within park sites and um, they either were in the process or had just adopted this policy in it um, no they had just adopted it anyway their their comment to me was something to the effect that it wasn't really making an impact uh, as far as taking up a, a lot of extra space uh, in other words, displacing, quote, paying customers, unquote, they mm -hmm. weren't having an issue with that just because it, there wasn't, maybe it's more 
uh, prominently known at the state campgrounds, which are very popular uh, as far as use anyway. So, so a local uh, example in, in the county, th there wasn't really uh, a huge impact that they were even there. The way they related to me was they, they just mm -hmm. they just weren't that concerned about it. So, I guess I would prefer to kind of take more of the rather than developing a policy for something that we don't need to over overkill right now, we let the usage kind of drive whether we need to f figure out something on that because I, I just don't sense that it's going to be a, a major, you know, impact where it's going to displace. And seasonally, you know, our numbers go up and down, but even during our peak season, there's a few weekends a year in the summer where we're absolutely at capacity, but there's usually our space is available. I mean, we're not usually so overflowing that we are turning paying customers away, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't be that concerned about and that. If I were to go down and use it, I would tell a camp host if somebody comes in that's a paying customer, I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Brian, I apologize for not being able to answer your question. Oh, that's okay. Uh, no. I'll go research it because <laughs> I don't know the answer. <laughs> anyway. Thank you very much. You bet. So I guess my question back to you, one more, one more item on this or one more little issue would be, do you, would you prefer if you support this, uh, that we develop something and then bring it back to you one more time, just to make sure you're comfortable with it, or would you just give me some guidance and say, go forth, either way is fine with me. Just, it's gonna take a little more time if we come back again, but that's not really that big of an issue. I would say give you guidance and move it through. That's kind of your call. So yeah. Whatever you're comfortable with. Why don't we just go ahead, support the concept and, and uh, make a recommendation to the city commission that they move ahead with a proposed policy. Is that a motion? That's a motion. I second that. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes. And I want to thank you from the Citizens Involvement Council. We voted on it. We got 100% support there. So I guess I can say that uh, the CIC thanks you, <laughs> Caulfield Neighborhood Association <laughs> thanks you, and the veterans thank you. Unanimous. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, Larry. Have a good evening. Um, Scott, a number of us seem to be having a technical issue with closing the screen that we're on. <laughs> uh, she's no, still got the park. Yeah, there. I can't. <laughs> or maybe I'm the only one who's mm -hmm. having the problem. Maybe right not. Frozen. It seems to be frozen, doesn't it? Uh oh, uh oh, did not mean that. That's okay. I can Let's go back this. to this. Okay. <laughs> Thank Anybody you. Else stuck in there? It, it's, it's, <laughs> it's partly magic. Is it? Yes. Okay. Well, my magic's not working. <laughs> and Scott just has the magic. <laughs> Good. And the comfort I don't know what I did. <laughs> and it's actually his presentation. He wants to share with us the other items as well. You want me to just take, go back sure. up to, so we're back on 4A on uh, the local share funding. We mm -hmm. talked about this last meeting, last month, and uh, we, the committee said put this back on the agenda as kind of a continuing discussion. Um, the, uh, I know some of you weren't there at the last meeting. We talked about, um, again, we have, uh, we have some funding left from our, our local share component from the Metro, Metro Open Spaces bond measure. Um, we're trying to determine as a city what priorities to use that money for before that, that agreement expires. Uh, it had, uh, the com city commission had asked to, to discuss this at a work session a couple, a uh, few meetings ago, I guess, uh, and their, their general take on it was that their, um, their consensus or their take was their preference would be to utilize it for um, acquiring uh, property to make connections from, from parks and open spaces. So, uh, you know, connecting, connecting sites and, and, and that type of thing. And we talked about that briefly at our last meeting and, and agreed that we'd want to kind of take this as a continuing discussion item. Um, I did bring a map <coughs> on the, uh, I posted it on the wall there. It's just our, our big city map. It's got all the parks identified. Um, somebody at the last meeting said, could we, could we look at all of the metro properties either in or around the city and basically the, the two major areas that we've got and we you know if anybody wants to, to take a look at that I could even for the next meeting I could maybe refine that a little bit more depending on what you want to look at but um, basically we're looking at Newell Creek 
the canyon. Mm -hmm. The majority of that is uh, is in public ownership. Most of that is metro property. Some of it the city owns some of the pe parcels around it. Uh, and then uh, Kanima Bluffs property, which is, uh, you know, we've got our little uh, park that we just finished on the on the kind of the entryway into that. But uh, Metro now owns into the hundreds of That's acres huge. on that. Yeah. They've acquired more properties recently, and it's, I think it's over, it's close to or over 300 acres, give or take, that they're that they're at now, kind of going south, even out of the city limits or well beyond. So they've. They've acquired, you know, a huge amount of property there. So, so there had been some discussion I know previously about maybe even connecting within the Kanema area. Uh, we could look at some some other areas in the city. Uh, we've been talking recently about connections, um, you know, signage. Um, doing some, we've done some signage projects recently. We handed out at the last meeting. Um, I gave you a um, a trails map that we had just produced that we're. We've got distributed around the community uh, walking and biking uh, map for uh, within city parks or, or along um, routes that are designated in our trails master plan. So we've got all those different types of things that we could take a look at. I guess the the question is how do we how do we refine that down and, and kind of get specific about it or what? It's really kind of up. It, it, However you want to talk about that is up to you. We, you know, the commission has pretty clearly said that's what they want to talk about. So that's kind of where we're, we're, we're landing here. No, we I know that's a lot of big information. I'm not sure how to, I, I guess I would prefer to sort of lay that out for you and let you ask questions or decide, you know, how you want to take that conversation forward. The one piece I was going to add is that when we've gone on the tour of parks, I think it's been a, a, a sort of a visual that we've tried to connect with to see what the links might be from park to park. Um, I don't think there's been anything obvious other than the discussion about Kanima on over to the um, prom. prom, right, yeah, and then that whole connection. but. How that relates to acquisition of property, which is what these funds should be available That's to correct. do, mm -hmm. I don't know. Depends sure. on if there's a willing seller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. There are a lot of factors. I mean, it, um, one one approach is that we we can just be sort of opportunistic. Uh, we've had some things come along here and there where. A property owner says, "Hey, would you be interested in talking about this and either, either acquiring an, an entire piece of property or just just in you know some type of an easement or an access through a property?" Um, I, you know, there's some things like that. We can we can be so we can be kind of opportunistic, or we can be specific and say we would we would like to connect <coughs> these areas, and then as staff we can go look at what we would need to do exactly to try to be successful in doing that. And then be more. I guess that's proactive. There's reactive and proactive. Mm -hmm. um, so that's there, there's a couple different approaches there. Could you remind us again about when these funds would expire? Well, we've um, extended our agreement into next um, around. Oh, I'd have to look up the exact date. I, I don't recall, but it's it's next spring that the we we did a one year extension of the agreement, but essentially Metro has said. That's you know that date is there because they have to, we have to put something in writing, but they want us to spend that money. It's it's our local money, mm -hmm. and um, within a reasonable amount of time we'd have to but spend that. But we can we can continue to extend that out um, if we were working on something and we said hey we need we need six more months we need another year. They're they're pretty open to that idea. At some point they'd have to say we got to spend those those dollars are going to sunset somewhere, but it's a little ways out. Mm -hmm. so. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of a it's a double answer. There's there is a real date of an expiration of the agreement next year, but they've they've committed to the potential for saying extending. we'll we'll work that out. It would be helpful for me uh, to have a reproduction of that map, and I'd also be curious <clears throat> as you're thinking, Scott, what the possibilities might be on such a map. You know, you might be able to indicate uh, possible areas that would make sense. 
rather than, at least in my case, looking at the map and wondering, well, let's see what makes sense. Uh, what I would suggest um, with with that point is we would we would look at our trails. We have a we have an adopted city trails master plan that was adopted several years ago, and it's still very it's still a very valid um, document. A lot of time and effort and, and uh, you know public input were, um, were were folded into that, and it gives us some good guidance on on trails. I think we would look at that as our guiding document to say where where are some of those priority areas. <coughs> um, what I can do is, uh, if if you'd like to go that route, is uh, at the next meeting we can take a look at our our master pl our trails plan and say th this is kind of what looks logical as far as the the major recommendation. Again, we've been kind of working on some of that with. Some of the linkages that we've been making, um, we haven't necessarily acquired trails, but we've we've just made linkages that already exist and and basically spelled them out a little bit better than they were spelled out, or even just putting them on that that uh, that trails map that we just put out. But that, correct me if I'm wrong, but that that can be done apart from what we're talking about, right? I mean, let's let's say we found something that made sense. That only needed maybe a little bit of improvement of, a, of an existing trail and some signage and something like that. Would we be able to use these funds for something like that, or would this be separate from that? So, um, actually, Lynn was was right on the money um, with your recollection. The the local share funds uh, from this from this uh, fund from Metro are they're limited only to acquisition. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't be any type of development or improvement. Uh, or mm -hmm. maintenance or anything like that. They're just strictly acquisition. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of that was to acquire open spaces, and that you know, and that can be open spaces <coughs> that help us make connections yeah. between places or what have you. So, I mean, they, and you know, if we acquire property, it can it can serve a dual <coughs> purpose. It can be an open space that protects, you know, and, and keeps something as a as an open space, but also provides a, a some type of a connector corridor yeah. or whatever. So. Well, I'll make a suggestion. I'll get the first uh, line on the map. <laughs> it's it's the trail that starts. Um, well, you could start it anywhere, but it's it you know it's coming out. Let's just say out of Clackamas Park, but I mean that's a continuation of the trail that just comes around uh, from Gladstone. Um, but it goes up through Oregon City, through the, up the the Grand Staircase, through the prom, or you know across the prom. So you've gone up one tier of Oregon City and you're walking the prom and you go through Old Kanema and, and Kanema and then you go up through, you know, past the armory, you, you're winding up, zigzagging up to Waterboard Park <clears throat> and then now you've traversed all three levels of Oregon City, so all three tiers of Oregon City. And now, and I think, I think when we were up there the last time, we all noted that there was a trail that's right behind those homes or right in front of those homes that actually goes back down the hill toward Fifth or Lynn and it kind of zigzags through a neighborhood and then it, then it drops out right on Fifth Street and then from there you could go over to b past the pool and up toward uh, Atkinson Park and then back down back down like 15th perhaps or somewhere around there and join join or complete the loop back on 99. Something like that would be, I think, all about the center of gravity of, of you know, where we are sitting right now. It would also take you through the tiers of Oregon City, a very unusual feature for any city to be a three-tiered city. Mm -hmm. So something, something to think about. Whether or not we'd have to acquire any property to do that, I'm not sure, but... I mean, there's some, there's some pretty, pretty awesome uh, vistas along the way mm -hmm. as you're as you're taking that that walk. That's if you follow, if you followed me, I was born and raised in Oregon City. <laughs> I've I've been around a little bit, so so let me try to figure out what we're just to move this along. Um, what I would what I would do at uh, hopefully by the next meeting is bring back something a little more tangible for us to put our hands on and kind of. You know, we can actually um, look at some things and, and, you know, some things like Brian's idea there. Uh, um, 
probably print out some individual maps for each of you. Yeah, that's the Trails Master that's Plan right February there. February of 2012. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really hard for my old eyes to read. <laughs> So we can, I don't we know. can do something yeah. larger. Um, I think I've given out some maps here and there over over time, Place but um, so I'll I'll try to come up with something that is maybe as a a little bit smaller version of that. That I don't think each of you Still wants a, a wall size that. map or anything, but <laughs> that we can uh, kind of put our hands around a little bit more and actually start looking at how that connects to our recommendations in our in our trails plan, and then if there are any areas where it looks like we would need to acquire property to make some of those linkages happen because that's what we've got to bring this conversation right. back to because mm -hmm. brian you you yeah. were exactly right we can continue the trail right. conversation regardless mm -hmm. uh, but what we're specifically trying to do is determine where to go and and look at potential acquisition right. and the amount that we have is uh, available is is roughly it's around three hundred thousand, I believe, left in that in that fund. So, that's not going to get us, you know, everything that we're going to need or want. Mm -hmm. But we can we could identify some key places. If right. I guess the idea is if we can end up honing in on some maybe some key Priorities. places yeah. that we could look pieces. at. Yeah, that would probably be our, our our I think our goal of the the process of discussing that. Kind of a paraphrase would be looking for the missing links. Very good. <laughs> mm. So if that works for you, I'll. I'll <laughs> try to figure out a way to bring something back that that helps kind of move that Find conversation that. forward that way wonderful good and oh yes I'm sorry the trail master plan is on the city's website and if this grant is for or these funds are for acquisition I would think that some of your areas out towards the edges of the city, uh, if you look at your trail master plan and see what they have proposed there, I think within the city it's going to be hard to acquire property and there's probably not a lot of property that would be available to you, but I'm thinking toward the community college, towards Royal Oaks and that, that area, some of the outlying areas might offer you some land that you could utilize that kind of funding to mm -hmm. satisfy future needs as well. So I know with the South End Concept Plan, that's part of what we're going to be studying is how do we connect that with the rest of the city through trails and so forth. So, Good. But that's what we're doing there is not involved with the current master plan for trails because that was developed, I think it's about six and a half years ago now. So it's a, a, it's a document changes. that has a little fuzz on it. Yeah, a little bit, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. for sure. That's a good I idea to keep in mind as we look at that. Thank you. Let me just keep moving on through the... Sure. Oh, did you have something, Brian? Nope. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were saying something. So we're on, uh, so the next item then is the, uh, under back under the RV park again, it was the, the first of the two items, the master plan process, and this is just basically a general update keep you posted on on what we're doing and where we're at um, we have a um, we have an RFP a request for proposals developed it's 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 in its draft and almost final stage I'm meeting with um, Larry Potter and, and another one of our staff this coming week to basically kind of finish that document which is an RFP is the document that you advertise and say hey we we're looking to, to do a master plan we'd like to solicit consultants to do that and the consultants make their proposals. Um, we had talked about having a member of, of PRAC be on the selection committee when we actually pick our consultant to do the design for us. And I think Don was pretty interested. He's not here to talk about that tonight, but I don't know if you had any other ideas about that or if you want to just kind of go with that and we can try to get Don into that process. Mm -hmm. And they, the other the other part of it, we, we had talked about having the um, high school construction group involved in this process as mm -hmm. much as possible. I would contact, um, when we get to that point, I would contact Britt, uh, Mr. Tucker, and, and see where where they want to you know, be involved or not. They, they may not want to be involved in the selection, but maybe in just in the actual, when we get to the design phase of it. Um, but we can we can definitely keep them posted. So, so uh, we're gonna be advertising that uh, in, the, in the pretty near future. 
and then uh, we'll have some type of selection process, a little committee we usually put together. Um, I would assume that Don will participate as he's able to do that. I'll contact him, and if anybody else on this committee specifically wanted to be, I would welcome that. There, we can have more than one person. That doesn't have to be just Don. So you just need to let me know that because we're probably talking, you know, in the next month or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless you have any other questions, that was it. Just wanted to keep you posted on the process. That's great. Okay. And I guess uh, if that happens in the ne within the next, you know, the next few weeks uh, between meetings, I would assume that you just let us know that. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm. I think I might be interested, but I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Keep you posted. Okay. Great. And then we've already done uh, the second part of the RV park update, so we're um, we've moved on from that. And the PRAC member terms. You want me to kind of give the background on that again? Sure. I think you're the the fellow in the know. <laughs> we uh, we talked about this last meeting. Um, <coughs> three of the member terms are expiring in December. Uh, that is Lynn and um, Patrick and Mr. Birch here to my right. Uh, Marty is not a, not available or not able because we have the limitation on two terms. Uh, he could not apply even if we could have talked him into it. Uh, so he, he's done no matter what. Uh, Lynn and Patrick both had the option of applying and, and seeking a second term. Um, uh, Patrick... Uh, at the last meeting had indicated that he was thinking that he probably wouldn't be able to do that because of some, some personal time commitments. Uh, the PRAC members encouraged him to think about that, um, and I think he did. He wrote me um, a very nice email uh, yesterday uh, explaining that he wasn't going to be here tonight because of some other conflicts, but also he, in that email, indicated to me that he would not be able to do another term uh, just mostly because of family time. He's got a young child now, and he, he really wants to spend uh, as much time as possible focusing on his family as well as he's got some other commitments outside of, of you know, that. So so he indicated that he had, he had taken Prax's advice and thought about it, and he reached the same conclusion that he had before. So he will not be um, available. And then, Lynn, I don't want to speak for you. Maybe you can kind of say what I already know, but you can say what's on your mind about it's that. It's really hard to say, but I, I've decided that to keep my other commitments in my life, I'm not going to be able to continue. But I'm feeling overwhelmed at what a new uh, committee we're going to be having. Um, I want to continue to support the work that's done by the committee and uh, – maybe projects up ahead the project Don had suggested of a park celebration um, but I just <clears throat> I'm I'm spreading myself too thin and I need to commit to my family and and some other priorities so I'm sorry <laughs> so where that leaves us basically is that um, uh, we'll have three openings and uh, so as of December 31st we'll have three openings we have um, a concerted effort that's always going on uh, with our city of, of promoting uh, board and committee openings. You probably get some of those emails. I think if you're on the, mm -hmm. if you're on any of the boards, you get an, a generated email from our, our city recorder, Nancy Ide. You've probably seen her names a few her name a few times. Um, that you know we've got positions. It probably said we have three positions for PRAC, even whether you were going to reapply or Patrick was anyway, mm -hmm. because. Technical Our mm -hmm. policies, you have to reapply even if you can uh, serve another term. So that's why I already had stated that. Um, so there's an effort to put the word out, but one of the best ways that we always have is kind of word of mouth. If you know somebody in the community that would be great to serve on this committee and you think they might be interested, is definitely let them know. Just tell them to jump on the city's website or just directly contact me and I'll give them I'll give them more information than they know. Um, so there are a number of ways we're kind of putting the word out. Um, specifically, Lynn's position, we do need to note, is the representative position to the Pioneer Community Center. We have one designated position to the uh, Pioneer Center, and you've served very well uh, in that position, in that capacity, mm -hmm. Lynn, I want to say. Um, I know that Kathy Wiseman, our, our Pioneer Center uh, supervisor, is kind of 
reaching out within within the center and, and within cool. her network there uh, to find somebody that would be good at representing that mm -hmm. that that portion of of our department. Kind of, I think that's great. sort of how you came to us, Lynn. Is, exactly right. And, yeah. and it, it was a great choice. <laughs> but uh, so, in, anyway, if you have any ideas or know of anybody or, or what have you, definitely uh, we need, we can put the word out. So we'll just be. Yeah, oh, and I and I'm sorry, Lynn. Uh, we have I have received one application from a community member um, uh, interested, and we'll be I'll be contacting and following up with him. And then at some point, we'll do the normal process, which is we set up some interviews, and um, you usually interview the candidates along with um, our mayor. Uh, Mr. Neely's been coming in and sitting in on those interviews, which has been great because he's been really involved in the selection of the committee members for all of our many city committees. So anyway, we'll just be kind of going through that process here. And what is the deadline again, Scott, that we well, just need to apply by? The deadline is October 31st to apply for any position that's open, wow. but if it's an open position and we don't have an applicant, the deadline is, is whenever people apply. So wow. if we have a lot of applications, then we would set a cutoff date so we can move forward. But right now we have one application for three positions, so our deadline is kind of ongoing. So. It would seem that there are several activities that are coming up that people who are citizens should feel passionate about and one of them is the dog park it seems like um, we should be able to enlist and involve other community members I certainly hope so it's an important um, honor to be part of this well I'll there'll be some continuing discussion as we move forward I'll <coughs> post this to what I know and if if you have any recommendations or if you have anybody that you know of please uh, kind of uh, just forward that to me and um, we'll have uh, at least one more one more meeting in this calendar year that a little bit later here we're gonna need to set a, a meeting date because our next meeting falls on on Thanksgiving uh, but uh, hopefully I'll be at work. the three the three outgoing members will be able to come to that last meeting if possible because we always like to do a little thank you and goodbye kind of a thing for people that are going off of the committee so Go to yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say we need to have the requisite cake and uh, maybe Definitely. it might be a little too late for leftovers at, by that time so, somebody can bring but we need to have a we need to have a cake and uh, so we're kind of skipping over other general business, <laughs> getting right on to schedule for our next meeting. Are, are there any other items for general business to, to be added? If not, then I'm going to call for member reports. And Bob, would you like to start? OK, thank you. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, the first meeting of the South End Concept Plan group met on the 18th, and I was absent for the first meeting. <laughs> uh, the schedule uh, came up very quick, and I already had something. I was out of state, and I couldn't uh, attend. But I did have a special tutorial session with uh, uh, Pete Walter la this Monday, last Monday. Okay. And so he went over most of the issues that the the uh, advisory team went over on their first meeting. There will be, it looks like, about 20 people on the advisory team. And I see uh, Tom is on that advisory committee. Uh, I guess it's going to go on for 12 to 18 months, as I understand it. And each of the people on the advisory committee is being asked to attend uh, at least one of, of several groups, like the Chamber of Commerce and uh, many groups like that, Rotarians and other standing groups or organizations to uh, make sure that there's broad coverage and that uh, a lot of people have input into the concept plan. Uh, this Saturday there's going to be a tour of the, the area. So I guess there'll be a bus that'll pick up people and take them around to the territory that is under consideration. 
Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, learning more about the process and uh, the eventual outcome. So it looks like a very interesting project. Other than that, uh, I don't have anything else to report. That's good. So short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll make a really quick report as, a, I guess, a PRAC member, but also uh, one of the now three coaches for the Oregon City High School swim team. Um, this will be the first season in several years, since before 2007, that the, uh, the Oregon City Pioneers will host swimming meets, home swimming meets, at the uh, Oregon City High School pool with six lanes available, wow. uh, all with starting blocks. and. Uh, we were able to work with the city and just come up with a great plan. So we're going to have all six starting blocks in place, and we won't have that uh, poor uh, one Oregon City High School swimmer that always had to take lane three and start in the water. So uh, it's it's going to be great, and things are getting better. And it's due to cooperation and like Tom, like you're talking about, you know, people getting together and uh, coming up with solutions. And uh, the swim team, which is a nonprofit, the the Oregon City swim team. Uh, the club team uh, applying for a metro enhancement grant to get a, a scoreboard. Uh, and if you haven't been down there to see that scoreboard, it's outstanding. It's a great uh, scoreboard, and uh, you know, and that was that was garbage money, fifty cents per ton, and uh, you know, so uh, things are getting better. Really, I really, really, uh, I'm looking looking forward to this season as a coach. Well, I'm glad to see that happen. My uh, grandfather was one of the builders of this one. All right, 65, yeah. yeah. Outstanding. All right. Thank you. Nice. And uh, I had uh, an email communication with Kathy um, Wiseman from the Pioneer Center, and she said that the thing that's biggest on the horizon is this upgrade that includes a projector and a screen uh, that's going to allow that really large community room to be um, a venue for larger commission meetings and also winter movies. So fun mm -hmm. things happening. That's correct. And um, she said that gearing up for the holidays, they're very involved with Phyllis Stocking. I, I work with a group that does part of that project too. Food baskets, energy assistance, holiday meals, the spirit event, there's a it fascination with Halloween stuff that <laughs> seems to go on. Anyway, uh, art show and holiday bazaar. So, and this is on top of all of the really core services. Um, almost twenty, uh, the, almost three thousand uh, home delivered meals came out of yeah, that that's center awesome. in August. Um, wow, a few that's less awesome. in September. Uh, over a thousand congregate meals. Um, transportation eight seventy three, um, and center services almost three thousand. And recreation, 2,200, and meetings and rentals, just under 1,500. So it's a very vital mm -hmm. community resource, and I invite you all to um, to go by there. Her, one of the reports started talking of some of the sadness about some of the drains that need to be fixed and door handles that fall off. But you know, it's they've really done a great job of trying to maintain it and not defer the big stuff. It's just when you old and old, own an old building, there are things that go wrong. So I think they're doing a great job, a presence in the community. I'm feeling a little out of it. I, uh, mine's going to be the shortest one because I have no report. <laughs> <laughs> I have about the same report, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I had short timer's disease. <laughs> I did not. I had nothing to report. I, Got a 21 year old's birthday party tonight, so. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Designated driver. Good. A nice, responsible papa thing to do. Good. So, I for guess. For staff reports? Yeah. In the and can you thank the, Denise for all of those reports that she sent? Yeah, we got really those. We got those. Out a lot um, of the facts and Yeah, figures. those are, yeah. The, we try to send those out. We'd like to do that every month, but it just. The time that we have available, and sometimes it, we don't have the opportunity to do that. But uh, anyway, thank you for that. I'll, I'll definitely pass that along. She had a commitment with one of her sons tonight, a, a school program, and so I said go do that. And Larry's 
Larry Potter is gearing up for the, the weekend events. The, the, the cemetery is putting on Halloween type events and, and um, so he's he's going to be spending like many, many extra hours this weekend doing that. So that's why you only see me tonight. Um, really quickly, just a couple of things. So you already received the reports um, that Denise sent the other day that kind of gave you a good snapshot of a bunch of things going on. If any of you need a hard copy of that, I, I brought a couple extra copies. Um, you can grab one of those if you'd like it. A really good summary of some things that are going on. Um, then I have just uh, two other items. Um, one is just to let you know about uh, some tree issues at Clackamat Park uh, that, that will be going on here in, in the, the next couple of weeks or so. Um, we've had, uh, you know, a, a big part of our jobs in managing our, in our parks is also managing a lot of very mature trees that have been around for a lot of time. We have an old park system, a lot of, um, a lot of mature trees that, that live and then they eventually die. And that's kind of part of our process of managing is while, they're, while the trees are dying is we don't want them to, to die and fall over onto somebody and hurt somebody or giant limbs that fall off as part of that, that process of, of decaying and so forth. So uh, as part of our maintenance, we're, we're constantly monitoring trees that are aging. We've got uh, a number of, of trees, um, several trees in Clackamet that have reached that point where they're, they're at failure. And we, we monitor that as staff. We have staff that are, that are um, certified arborists, but then we always go out and when we're going to remove a, a mature tree of any type, we bring in uh, an, a, a certified arborist that is independent from the city <laughs> To validate what we think, you know, is is going on, and mm -hmm. in the case of the trees at Clackamas, that's that that we th that was validated. So we actually have eight trees that we're wow. removing. Cottonwoods. Um, what's that? Cottonwoods. Uh, some some that, and some some others. Uh, yeah, um, cottonwoods especially they they grow fast and they die fast. Um, they get very large, but they grow fast, and that actually leads to a, a faster decay. Um, but the, good, the upside of this, I mean, this is, that's just part of the natural management of, of, of kind of the urban forests and trees, is that we have been, uh, the last two years, we've been planting hundreds of new trees in the community, uh, in parks and in some of our open spaces and some of our right-of-ways. Um, we've actually had this, this program where we've been kind of, it's been a commission goal where we've, there's been some money um, put into our budget the last two years to, um, to plant a number of new trees, and we've done a lot of those in our parks. Kind of, that's a natural, you know, connection to where you would put new trees. And, and a lot of those have gone in at Clackamat, or right near Clackamat. Some of the areas kind of going towards John, John Storm, that overflow parking lot just across the street. We planted, um, so we've planted dozens of new trees. So for the trees that are going out, we pr probably planted three or four new ones uh, for each of those, and, and we're going to be continuing to do that. So anyway, uh, but. Uh, if you happen to be driving by and seeing some trees coming down, that's what's going on. And if you have any questions about that, uh, I'd be happy to answer, be more specific about mm -hmm. if you want to know specifically which species and, and so forth. And then uh, just uh, going to give a quick acknowledgement to a couple of our, upgoing, or a couple of our upcoming um, holiday events. Uh, uh, we just talked about the at the cemetery this weekend, we have the Haunted Cemetery. Um, this Saturday evening it's from 5 scary. to 9. Um, it's actually our first annual event. We used to do this as part of the Spirits Coalition group that go around and do a bunch of different sites, but they're still doing that, and we're just doing, our staff are just doing a specific cemetery event. Um, it's, it's family friendly. There will be some tours through the, um, the pioneer, historic pioneer section of the cemetery and there will be a whole bunch of really great um, activities that are very kid friendly, all kinds of little booths and stations and, and of course everybody's encouraged to dress up. It's um, 11 and under is free and 12 and over is 5 bucks so if you're interested in that. And then lastly uh, on uh, on Halloween night, the 31st, next Wednesday, I think it is, uh, mm -hmm. we have our annual Swamp Swim event at the swimming pool. Uh, it's, that's turned into be <laughs> something uh, really big the last few years. Um, if you show up in a costume, you get, you get to swim for free that night. 
kids. It's basically we're <laughs> orienting that to kids. Um, and uh, in your costume? Yeah, we. <laughs> well, you, you you do some activities, and then you bring your swimsuit along and swim. And uh, we do some things in the in the community room and around the around the thing. But um, actually, the last couple of years, we had so many. We have a limit of how many people can be in the actual water. <laughs> We exceeded that number, and we actually had to turn some people away. Um, but we've done other activities for those that, that didn't get there in time. So that has become a very, very popular event that we've been doing, and it's a lot of fun. So anyway, just some things going on. And uh, that's all I've got. And we do need to talk about um, picking a date for the next meeting. Well, I'm thinking that a logical replacement would be the following Thursday, because we have one more Thursday in the month of November. I don't have my calendar with me, but is it like the 29th? 29th, yeah. So we could do that. Um, that you know, sounds we, good. We could basically do any of the next couple of Thursdays after Thanksgiving would, would work for me. Yeah, the one after. But you all can just pick which one works best for you. Yeah, I think psychologically, if we can keep it in November and not mm -hmm. get into that December craziness. And uh, I believe maybe we should, and we could certainly do it next time, but if we, uh, I think we usually take December off. Well, it is right before Christmas, so that would probably be a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we usually so, miss, uh, we usually don't hold meetings um, in August and December. So this would be, this next meeting would be, you know, a post Thanksgiving, say goodbye to the three, you know, members of Prague that are departing, bash. <laughs> bring your leftover turkey. Yeah, <laughs> bring bring leftover turkey. <laughs> no, <laughs> salmonella everywhere. So we'll um, we'll plan on the 29th, and I'll I'll probably follow up and just confirm that um, with all of you and for the folks that aren't here tonight, so they can put it on their calendars. Great. Wonderful. Okay, I am going to adjourn the meeting, and it looks like it's eight. 27 or so? No. Is it yours or my area? What time is it? 23? 24. 24. Well, my professional opinion.